If you didn't see the previous episode, please click below where I have part one. It's the first story of Mitch Smiley, an incredibly inspiring guy who served 38 years in prison, but came back to society strong with his dignity intact. You see how he looks happy there with his wife. They have been together for many years since he was serving this lengthy sentence. It's just an incredible story of an individual who developed a talent and developed a, a pursuit of excellence in every area of his life. And he is now working as a productive member of society, living his dreams, happy every day, always in gratitude, even though he served 38 years in prison. This is a story of redemption, and I do hope that you will, uh, in, uh, you will encourage him by looking at the show notes below where I have links to all of his sites. Um, listen, he, this, his name is Mitch Smiley, and he is the host of a very popular YouTube channel called Hard Intentions, and I encourage you to subscribe. Now listen to part two of my interview with Mitch Smiley, who is now an honorary prison professor. Super excited that the Prison Professors Program gets another opportunity to speak with Mitch, an amazing guy who did 38 years in prison, but he doesn't let that 38 years in prison define who he is. He's a man who came home, he, got, he did whatever he had to do, taking minimum wage jobs, drilling, um, trying to get into the cabinet making business, um, anything it took, including looking over bathrooms. And you can get that information in the previous episode. You could also get links to all of Mitch's um, amazing accomplishments in the show notes that I'm going to write. And I really encourage you, have your family, if you're in jail or prison, visit his Hard Intentions YouTube channel, subscribe. I encourage you to look at his websites, buy his t-shirts, because it's really important to the Prison Professors Program that we support formerly incarcerated people who are doing the right thing and becoming successful. And this is a story of overcoming struggle and adversity. So Mitch, I just want to personally thank you. Uh, I know it's this weekend and you're taking the time to, to spend time with our audience and our audience is different from yours because they're all locked up. But yeah. I want to well, thank you for taking the time to, 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 to speak with them because you would have been an inspiration to me when I was in prison. And I know you're going to be inspiration to other people by just showing them what's possible. So in the previous episode, we closed out with you talking about starting your t-shirt company and reaching out and getting help from a famous celebrity, Jesse James. I think he's even yeah. married to a movie star, if I remember his story. Yeah, he was. He was? He was married to Santa Bullock for a while. I thought so. I just remember he was such a famous guy. But, but at the end of the day, he had the heart and the decency to promote you because you wound out and asked for help. And that resulted in really um, yeah. leveraging you sales. Know, um, I remember uh, when I was in the long-term offender program, like I've done, uh, when I was in Lancaster prison, I worked in arts and corrections and basically my boss was on the minimum yard and I was on a level four yard and this arts and corrections program is funded by the state. Um, they have art supplies, guys come in, you teach guys how to draw, paint, they have screenwriting classes, all that kind of stuff. But um, a lot of the artwork we did, we used to have a fundraiser every year and raised uh, funds for uh, the Children's Center that helped abuse children and their mothers and stuff like that. So I, I've always been involved with stuff like that. Um, excuse me. Okay. This is one of the things out here in society. We've got all types of phones and gadgets that take our time. And when that happens, that's not a big deal. We just roll with it. This is a prison producer program and it's okay. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, I've always been into like, you know, I don't have a problem helping other people, bottom line. Um, and But one thing they taught you, uh, they try to teach me in the program was, I remember this uh, one counselor specifically told me, look, it's, it's cool that you're went into helping other people but part of being a well-rounded, you know, person and grounded is being able to accept help from other people and asking for help and being able to accept it. A lot of guys have trouble um, accepting help or, or like people donate stuff to me on my YouTube channel. They, they have a thing, uh, Super Chat, they can make donations and, I, and I'm just still... I'm blown away by it because I, I'm, I have a hard time asking for help. I always have. And so that was something I remember from my program. So 
reaching out to people like Jesse James and some other people. Um, it didn't come naturally, but I thought, you know, hey, what do I have to lose? You know, I, I'm involved with motorcycle stuff, you know, Harley Davidson type bikes. And, and that, a lot of my artwork is geared around motorcycle lifestyle. So he's somebody that I identify with. Uh, he's got skills in uh, fabricating metal and he's a welder and just, he's just, he's an awesome dude. So I, I reached out to him and, and, and he reached back and he helped me. So uh, if you get out of jail or even if you're in jail, don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. That's my kind of a message behind that. That's a great story. So Mitch, Mitch, but you didn't only stop at starting a, a t-shirt company. Um, how, how, well, first of all, let's even explore the t-shirt company. How did you start a t-shirt company? What did you do? <clears throat> well, I was in prison, you know, and I'm an artist. I've been, like I said, I've been drawing, tattooing, painting, all that stuff forever. Um, uh, I, I, I was in uh, Soledad, and I remember hearing the stories about this guy that started the t-shirt company, Tap Out, and... and uh, I and interviewed him. And Affliction, all that kind of stuff. And these guys sold their t-shirt company for like three million bucks or something. I, I didn't get the whole story, but that's the gist of what I got. And I thought, man, that's insane, you know? And then I started talking to guys, like, yeah, t-shirts are a big game out here. And uh, so I thought, well, you know, so I did some t-shirt patterns. I painted them in acrylic paint, and when I got out, um, you know, I, like I said, I worked, and, and uh, just something, it was a dream I had, you know, to sell my artwork, to sell t-shirts. That's been a dream of mine for But But for tell us time. about the process. So you came home, you had a lot of artwork. I know that you've got talent. I know that you've got a library of content that you created, and how did you convert that artwork into a t-shirt? What was that process? Well, um... You know, I had a little money to get started with, takes money. Um, I met to, I, I shopped around different print shops, right? Places that print t-shirts. Um, I don't have the, the area, the space to do it in or the equipment to print my own shirt. So I went to a print shop and basically showed him what I got going on. He's into riding motorcycles and all that kind of stuff. So that was a win-win there. And uh, he's like, yeah, we can do that. And uh uh, you know, I had to go down to get, yeah, we had to go down to get my business license. I had to get uh, a seller's permit, which allows me to sell stuff and pay state taxes. And, you know, that was a proud moment, you know. Well, it uh, should have know. been a proud moment. But, but for, let's, say, let's say I'm in jail or Mitch is in jail. I can tell you the type of information you would have liked to have known. And that is, well, how much does it really cost? to start a t-shirt company. How much did you invest to get this thing off the ground? About $4,000. So 4,000 and that also, result- That's also my, I went to GoDaddy for my website and they help, they have tools to help you create your website. The business license isn't too expensive. Seller's permit comes with that and all that. But the main thing is the t-shirts themselves. Um, when you go down and get your t-shirts made, there's a setup fee. Um, I got lucky because my printer, he does all the vectoring, which is all the, you know, scanning it and getting it onto the screens and then, uh, and then printing. So you, you're paying for your t-shirts and the printing process, you know, all in one shot. So it's a little expensive, but. No, that's not expensive. It's phenomenal. And it's just great teaching you're giving to somebody because if I, if I'm a young guy in jail and I know, okay, it's going to cost me about four, maybe five with other ex incidental expenses. I'm going to end up with something because I'd love for you to give the student a little bit more insight there. So for the 4,000 that you put together, right. not including all of the time, because you put in 38 years to learn how to become a good artist, yeah. <laughs> right? You put in yeah. all the time to draw the artwork, but yeah. then you needed 4,000 in cash. I started with three different designs. Three designs. You start with one, you could do it for a little cheaper, but, uh, and so you wanted to have three patterns. Involved. Yeah, you three wanted different shirt designs, right. And then you needed to buy the shirts and then print on the shirts. And how many shirts did you get for I that 4,000? I got of each design. But here's the thing. The print shop sells me the shirts also. Okay. So they're selling me the shirt and the, it's, you know, the whole shot. Understood. Right so for 300 shop. shirts, for $4,000, you got 300 shirts. Is that right? Well... 
the shirts cost a little bit less. That that included my uh, my business license, my my website, all that. But at the end of the day, you only walked away with 300 shirts, right? Right, right. That's right. So they cost you about $13.50 each for those 300 shirts. How much did you sell those shirts for? Uh, 20, I sell my shirts for 25 bucks. So. And it depends on how many colors are involved with the shirt. If you get a one color shirt, it's cheaper than getting six colors. But no matter what, we sell our shirts for 25 bucks, no matter what they cost us. But the important thing, the important message here for a guy is I said, you invested a total of 4,000. That means you got back right. about 8,000 when you sold all 300. Yeah, it's about right. And then you went and did it again? Yeah, I've done it a few times. Now I have about six designs now. How long did it take you to sell those first 300 shirts? It took, it, it took a while. But like, uh, once, but once uh, Jesse reached out, I reached out to Jesse and he gave me a, a little bump, man. They, they went quick. And so from there, now I want to say some of the people that my, I have an Instagram, my Instagram account went up to like 6,000 people within a couple of weeks. And some of those people, one of them in particular, got at me and said, hey, you should talk to this guy, uh, Lockdown 23 and 1. He interviews guys who have been to prison on YouTube. So I reached out to him, and, and he interviewed me. And, um, <clears throat> you know, he's got a million followers on YouTube. So uh, that was – and, you know, we become friends. His name's Josh. Uh, I've seen so, his show. So – yeah. And so then you, from there, I started my own YouTube channel. So you did a show on 23 and 1, and did that result for you in getting more fans and more uh, sh orders? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what it did was it, it, it people started encouraging me to have my own channel. So uh, my wife's kind of tech savvy. I'm not. So she's my tech support. Uh, we created uh, our own YouTube channel, which is also car called uh, Hard Intentions. And um, my very first interview was with Josh, who runs Lockdown 23 and 1. And now we have, what, we have almost 100 videos now. Um, so it's, it, and, and people who watch the uh, YouTube channel have been just fantastic. Um, uh, you know, I don't get on there and bullshit them about uh, how glamorous prison is, because it's not. Um, and people seem to like it. And, and you know, we, we get a lot of sales. People buy shirts and prints of my art and stuff from my YouTube channel. So the YouTube channel, you know, the YouTube channel has become a business for you. It's uh, it, you know, it's been a, a business aid, I would say, you know, um, because I don't really feel like the channel itself is a business because other than people donating, like when we have live chats, we don't make a lot of money off YouTube, but it helps promote my t-shirt business, you know, but I also want to say, um, the t-shirt business is cool. Um, if you're going to do it full time, I don't live in a city where I can get out and I live in the mountains. Uh, if you live in a city, you can get out and hustle your business, you know, on foot. Um, so I was looking for another job. Um, at one point I was talking about maybe working at a gas station for minimum wage to kind of supplement the t-shirt business money. And I noticed uh, when I was in prison, some guys got out and they started doing forensic cleaning. Um, and for guys that are not familiar with that, uh, they went to Oakland and uh, they, they do like crime scene cleanups, uh, you know, murder, suicides, accidental deaths. They clean out the back of cop cars when somebody's bleeding or puking in a cop car. They call the, the, the forensic cleaning company. They go clean that. They pick up dog poop. And in the city, when people crap on the sidewalk, they go clean that up. And they get paid pretty good. So I was interested in that. And I actually researched that when I was in jail. There's several companies that do it. Um, so I noticed the guy started following me on Instagram. And I followed back. It was a forensic cleaning company. And... I had no idea where he was located. And I say, you know, I was interested in that and I, I'd like to get a job doing that part time. And so we communicated back and forth and he said, uh, well, you know, where are you at? And I said, I'm up here in the mountains. And, and so it turns out I'm only like a half hour away from him. And he said, well, if I get this contract, you know, I'll give you a call. I said, all right, cool. You know, 
And then like four months later, out of the blue, I got a call say, you still interested in a job? And I said, sure. So now I'm working full time for him. Uh, my pay grades gone up a little bit and, uh, you know, it's hard work. And, uh, we drive around and, and pick up uh, Ill illegal dump sites all over Sacramento. Um, we clean clean out homeless encampments. Uh, like when the police tell the homeless camps they got to move, whatever stuff they leave behind, we go in and clean it out. Um, like yesterday, we scouted out a homeless camp that has probably enough trash to fill um, my house three times over. How many so guys are on your crew? Uh, we got eight, uh, eight guys that are on this crew. We got four trucks. So we're going to go over there Monday, and it's probably going to take us three days to clean that out. So my job, now if you think about this, I was willing to ask for assistance from Jesse James. Like, hey, I need some help getting my T-shirt thing going. And he gave me a bump, you know. He, he gave me a – it was just tremendous. I think the guy is great, you know. So that led to – an interview with Josh on Lockdown 23 and 1, which led to my own channel, which led to me getting a job and selling more T-shirts. Just that one asking for help. I mean, it's a progression, you know. Without a doubt. That progression has been what's really guided me through 26 years in prison and then building a series of businesses since I've come home. Yeah. And I want to thank you for sharing that story. I want to make sure that we have links to all of your uh, artwork and, and, and so that, so that they'll be in the comment section. And I, I would also like to encourage you to, to, if you want some business ideas of things that you can do, Mitch, I have some for you just in listening to you. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of movement in supporting formerly incarcerated people and businesses. Was the guy that you reached out to that has the forensic cleaning company was he formerly incarcerated? No. So one of the big deals. Yeah, but what's funny though, yes, yeah, is he was never incarcerated, but his grandfather wrote a book about Warden Duffy, who was a warden at San Quentin. I guess his grandfather knew Warden Duffy personally; they were friends. Um, and Warden Duffy's the first warden at San Quentin to do. He did away with corporal punishment. Um, he started the hobby program at San Quentin. He was a reformist, you know. Mm -hmm. And so my boss's grandfather wrote a book about him. So well, he had an interest in prison stuff, but he's never been to prison. I'm. I can tell you. I can tell you a little bit about my story if you think it would be helpful to you and what I've done to build businesses around my story. Because I think you should be building businesses around your story. Um, and it all starts with asking for help. And yeah. I, I started asking for help when I was in, my, in the jail. I was in jail facing a sentence of life without parole in the federal system when I was 23. Right. And all I cared about at that time was getting out of prison. I didn't think yeah. about anything else. Yeah. And then I was convicted. And when I was convicted, I really started to recognize that I'd made some really bad decisions. And I didn't like it. And I hated being in jail. I hated it. Yeah. Yeah. So I started reading and I read this book. And this book was a story about a guy who was in prison or in jail like 2,000 years ago. You probably heard of Socrates. Yeah, yeah. Socrates. Yeah. So he was in jail waiting for his execution. And when I read that book, it really changed the way I started to think. I realized I got to stop thinking about myself and start thinking about how I want to get out of here. And I used to, and from Socrates, I learned that it all really starts with asking good questions. And the questions I started to ask is there, first one, is there anything I can do while I'm in jail or prison, anything that'll change the way people see me? Yeah. And that question was probably, yes, there is something I can do. And that's what really governed my adjustment. So I went to prison. I said, okay, what will somebody want me to do when I get out of here? They said, well, they would want me to focus on education. They want me to focus on contributing to society. And they'd want me to focus on building a support network. And I thought, well, if I do that every day that I'm in here, things are going to change. And so I started reaching out for help because I didn't have any money. Right. And I started reaching out to universities and saying, hey, I'd like to go to school. I want to educate myself. And 
that led to a different, a different experience for me in high security, medium security, low security, minimum security. And then when I got out, Mitch, I did the same thing. I started asking business leaders for help and I told them the story just like you did. I did 26 years in prison and I'm here now and I'm determined to become successful and I want your help. And, and that led to me opening a lot of businesses and real estate deals and things of that sort. And right. recently I started a business that I'm going to encourage you to think about doing yourself. And this is how I started it. I wanted to generate more resources to take to develop the prison professor program so I could go into more jails and prisons because I felt that's a great way to help guys inside. I want to get them to think different. Right. And, and I do that by showing guys like you. And so I didn't know I was going to get money to do that because it takes a lot of money to do that. And right. so I, start, I reached out to a big CBD company. You know uh, what CBD is, right? Yeah. So I reached out to a really big one and I said, look, I really think there's a problem with mass incarceration. I think that I can have a role in trying to change that because I served a lot of time and people will listen to me only because I served 26 years and they don't believe it. I go into prisons, Mitch. And when I go into prisons and give presentations and take myself, they say, ah, oh, man, that fool was never in prison. And I yeah. tell them, hey, 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 you think you're giving me an insult because I don't look hard enough. But I got a little secret. That was the fucking plan <laughs> to come back and have nobody know I did a day in jail. And yeah. that's what I want for you. You know, and so I bring these things in. And there have been times when I've sold this to prisons, but a lot more times I give it away for free because these guys don't have it. I said, just show it to the people in prison. I can do that. So I went to the CBD company. I said, will you help me to do this? And I said, because I think that this is a big social injustice that people in prison can't get jobs. And I want to tell them your story. Here's a guy that got out and he, despite his skill set, he couldn't get a call back. But what right. he learned how to do was to create his own job. And that's the message. So I said, if you guys, I'm not asking you for any money, but I want to build a business around this. And so that led me starting a new business called CBDTV.com. And oh, I wow. create, I'll show it to you. I'll, um, well, I'll send you a link to it. But, it yeah. but, but so we've got a now store where we sell CBD and they do all the fulfillment. But then I had to go get other partners that put up money for marketing and so on. And they, you know, that results in us getting sales. And the money that comes in, that's what goes to fund prison professors so I can give this stuff away. So I told you this story because I'd love to see you doing something like that, Mitch. I'd right. love to see you go and start your own hazardous waste cleanup or forensic cleanup because you know how to do it. Well, but, I'm learning. Well, you're doing it. You're going to yeah. go do it. What do they pay for that? Well, you know, they, they pay well. Different like 20 bucks an hour pay, or something like that? Uh, somewhere around there. You know? so, so if they pay uh, well, that's... My boss, you know, it's kind of like, hey, you know, you know, keep running the down low. But, uh, you know, bottom line is... In, if you do crime scene cleanup in, uh, in Los Angeles, you're going to make more money than you do in Sacramento. And if you but do it in Sacramento, you're going to make more money than you do in Placerville. Got it, it depends on the area that you're doing it. Um, but I, I, and listen, uh, I send photographs to people like my parole officer. Um, of some of the stuff, I'm, like one time I found a dead dog laying there. It was eaten by maggots. Uh, you know, I had to clean that up. And so my pro officer said, man, thank you for what you're doing. You know, he goes, I don't have the stomach to do that. And you're cleaning up the city. And my cousin said, man, thanks for keeping Northern California beautiful. I mean, we're cleaning up some really bad stuff. And like I went into the neighborhood the other day, there's three, four, three and four hundred thousand dollar homes. Then there's uh, townhouses. Then there's a, a levee with the walking trail and there's a big field because there's an electrical tower. Well, there was a homeless camp in there, but you couldn't see it because it was covered by trees. So one thing we do, we work with the police. The police have a crime scene, they call us, or the police want to move out some homeless people. They go in and move. So they wanted these trees cut back so the homeless camp, so you could see it, you know. 
And so I cut down the trees around the homeless camp and all the bushes and everything. And, you know, it's just like part of what we're doing is helping the community by removing trash. And part of what we're doing is also helping the homeless community because they, if they, no one removes the trash, they got to live in it, you know? So it's a hard job, but it's fulfilling. You're doing it's a positive thing. Somebody has to do it. You're doing a positive thing, but I, I would just like you to be thinking about creating your business. I love to see guys like you build a business and you could employ formerly incarcerated guys and become an employer. But what I was going to suggest is that how that all starts is like, you know, who built your web? I haven't seen your website, but I'm going to put a link to uh, my it. My wife built it. <laughs> So, so if you learn all these skills about how to do what's called lead generation and things of that sort, where you could take your channel and just talk about what an incredibly inspirational story you are of becoming self-employed. You're an entrepreneur, you're a builder, you're building a business, but I'd love to see you build a business that is your business and you're employing people and you're getting your own contract with the city and- um. Maybe we can grow my boss's business and I can be a supervisor, you know? Well, you're Start doing there. great. You're doing great. You, what the most important thing to do, Mitch, is just make sure that you're always happy. And Yeah, you know, I'm happy. And, you know, everyone I work with and on the forensic crew, is, they're all good people. And uh, my boss is fantastic. Well, that's and, amazing. Um, You've got an amazing boss because he's groomed an amazingly loyal uh, team member. You know, and, and that's you know, and the whole team is basically has a positive out outlook, you know. Are they all formally incarcerated too? No, a couple of them are, but uh, no, like uh, his son-in-law's on the crew. He was incarcerated. I interviewed him. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just an incredible crew and everyone has a positive outlook. They like what they're doing and, and we all have good attitude and uh, it's just, uh, if you're feeling shitty that day, once you get around your coworkers, you know, you start feeling a little upbeat. I like it. It's wonderful. I love your energy and I love your story. And before when we were speaking, your wife had told us about a PO box that you have that guys yeah. in prison or jail may be able to reach out to you for guidance or mentoring. Yeah, you know, I want to say that, like, there was a time when I was in prison um, when, you know, I told my wife, hey, look, I'm never getting out, you know, because... California went through a phase. They didn't let anyone out. If you had a term to life, you were not getting out. Um, you know, uh, Gray Davis, the governor, wrote an uh, article in the LA Times and said, if you're in prison with a life sentence, you're going to parole in a pine box. And I mean, that was a mentality. That was, and so I'm out. I have friends that were in prison that had life without the possibility of parole. They are on the streets. You know, um, so... I had a shitty attitude for a long time. Then I, then I was like, you know what? I'm not getting out. I'm not going to have a shitty attitude. I'm going to be all I can be while I'm in prison. And look, now I'm out and I'm comfortable and I'm happy. And, you know, I'm working for someone who's, you know, providing me a good living. I have my own t-shirt business. We're going to save up and eventually get our own home. Uh, life's good. So, you know, like if there's people in prison that have issues or they want some encouragement, or if they have questions, they can write to me. You know, if it's uh, P.O. Box 1153, Placerville, California, 95667. People can write me from prison, I'll answer. And um, you've got an email address too, don't you? Yeah. Uh, which one should I use? Yeah, it's Mitch at hardintentions.com. I think that's the one that I have, and I'd like to put a link on that so that people can see how to reach out to you. I just want you to know, I think you and your wife are just an amazing couple and you'll be an inspiration. You know, I want you to know, we're in every state prison in California my program's in. Oh, wow. And not That's only- amazing. I want to tell you that I told my wife that that took a lot of effort on your behalf because it's not easy to get a program inside a California prison. It's not, I'm in every- if you're an ex-convict, you know. Not only am I in every state prison, but if the people go through my program, Mitch, they get a week off of their sentence through the Milestone program. Oh, that's insane. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, you know what? Wow. 
You know, I, I had someone's uh, mom sent me an email that uh, I get emails a lot from my YouTube channel. And she said that, you know, her son did some time in prison. And when he got out, basically, she couldn't understand his attitude and his behavior. And so he finally told her, hey, why don't you watch Mitch's channel, Hard Intentions, you know, YouTube channel. And she did. And she just, she said, you know, I want to thank you because now I understand what my son went through. I understand what he's going through out here in the world. And, and basically it helped her understand and get closer to her son. So when I get stuff like that, it just blows my mind and warms my heart. And so bottom line, if there's anyone in prison, man, that wants to write to me and ask me a question about whatever, I'll answer well, Mitch is an honorary prison professor. He's part of the Prison Professors Program right now, and we're taking it in the jails and prisons across America. We're, I want you to know, Mitch, we're in every state prison in California. We're in four federal prisons, including the USP at Atwater, the USP at Victorville. We're in the ADX in Colorado, the USP wow. Florence, Colorado. Um, I'm in the New York State Department of Corrections, Washington State Department of Corrections, and also the Mecklenburg County Jail, where guys are getting ready to go to prison. Yeah. And these stories are what would have inspired me at the start of my journey. They changed my life. And I want to thank you as a prison professor for uh, sharing this story of success after prison, because I really feel it's my job and duty to try and give as much of this information inside the prisons as possible. And I, I thank you for spending the weekend with me. I'll send That's up the meet and Wonderful. I'll send, I'll send you guys the, the, the footage as well. And, um, you know, I just want to say, man, if you're in jail, if you're headed to jail, uh, you know, it's not who you are. You're like, like they say, you know, you are not your worst decision in life. You know, that's not who you are. It doesn't define who you are. It just make it a starting point, you know, like uh, if, if you screwed up and you're on your way to the joint, that's, you know, just make that your starting point. You know, um, I spent my first 10 or 15 years in prison being an asshole, doing stupid stuff. And, you know, you don't have to do that 10 or 15 years as an asshole. You can start now and, you know, get your education, learn a trade. Um, you know, like, like a lot of guys aren't into college. A lot of guys are going to get out of prison. They want to work, get a trade while you're in there, learn how to weld right now out in the world. If you're a welder or a machinist, you can, or a plumber or an electrician, you can make a hell of a good living. Um, you know, I worked at the machine shop grinding metal and they were always in need of somebody to operate a machine and, and they pay pretty good. So, um, you know, learn a trade, get an education. If you're a book guy, get a, get a college degree, you know, so, I mean, it all starts with attitude and you have yeah. the right attitude. Yeah. And that's, that's, what's really amazing about you. So our course, you know, the, the course itself, it's called the straight a guide. And it says we first start by defining success. What's important for us, right. right? If I want to be the best artist in the world, I could either talk about it or I could learn how to draw every day and put in 10,000 right. hours to become right. good. And that's I know okay. how hard you work to do that. Yeah. Right. Second, you got to set really clear goals, right? How much am I going to do this every day, right? Then yeah. the third, if you do that, that's when you start the straight A guide. It says you got to have the right attitude, 100% commitment to success. And that's yeah. all I've heard you talking about, right? Yeah. You got out, you did anything it took, minimum wage job, hard work, build it, 100% commitment. That's the right attitude. Two, next, you got to have a vision. That's your aspiration. You yep. got to see yourself, as you just said, we're going to buy a house, okay? We're going to build a business. We're going to do that. That's what you and your wife did, aspiration. Next is you got to take action. You can't talk about it. Yep. You got to do it. There's a whole lot of people who talk about it, not a lot of people who do it. You got to be about it. You've you know? shown us that. Next is accountability. You got to hold yourself accountable. Nobody tells Mitch what time to get up in the morning or what time to go to bed. <laughs> He knows what he's got to do. Yeah. He runs his own show. That's ingenuity and, and effort. Next is awareness. You got to be aware of the game and the opportunity. You keep your head in the game of what you're going to do, and you find people like Jesse James, 
and then you make him aware of you and that's how you keep that cycle going. You're aware of opportunities. He also had that same experience when he went into forensic cleanup, found a guy, let, now the guy became aware of Mitch. The guy succeeds because he gets a really loyal employee. Mitch succeeds because he gets to do what he wants to do. And then it's about being authentic, being for real. It's about celebrating every achievement. I heard Mitch so much joy and happiness with what he has and what he does. And then it's about expressing your gratitude with appreciation. And I'm just so grateful to Mitch for taking the time to share this story. It would have been incredibly inspiring to me. You just validated our whole, whole course. And I just wanted to say, really go over very quickly our modules so that people see, I'm not just telling you from my experience, I'm learning from a mastermind prison professor, Mitch, who's of the Hard Intention Show. On your show, really. <laughs> so I, good. I appreciate it. Uh, I like talking with you and it's been a, it's been a pleasure. Well, let's stay in touch, and I'll share this uh, raw footage with you. Again, if you're watching this in a jail or prison, please reach out to your family. Have them support a formerly incarcerated guy by visiting the Hard Intentions YouTube channel. It's a big channel. It's growing to 10,000 viewers, and it's going to grow to 100,000 viewers in time because, as you can see, he's just an authentic, honest guy. We've also got his T-shirt company. I'll have links to all of that in the show notes. And I'll also have his contact information right on the video. So thanks so much, Mitch, for being a part of Prison Professors. And uh, we encourage our whole audience to be a part of your Heart Intentions program as well. Thanks a lot. You have a great day. You too, brother. Have a good interview.